In this video, I'm making a custom Damascus chef knife. Watch to the end so you can see the whole process of me making a feather pattern chef knife. All right, we are getting ready to start on this feather Damascus billet. We're using 1084 and 15 in 20. marking them to make sure that I keep the colors separate because sometimes I get the different materials mixed up. So I do the 1084 in the black and the uh, 15 and 20. Usually I do that in the red marker. One thing I learned from Kyle is uh, prep work, prep, prep, prep. And we're going to be doing a lot of that through this video, prepping the, the pieces of metal, getting them clean, making sure that everything's nice and tight and straight. A lot of times I'll put sheet metal on the outside of my billets, but this time I decided to TIG it up. And I MIG the ends because it doesn't matter out there and I could use extra strength anyway. Crank up the heat. Let's do it. I usually get, get that really hot on the outside where it's almost burning the billet. Then I will uh, do a quick press and stick it back in just so that I make sure that the core gets heated up also for that first forge weld. This is going to be a W feather Damascus. Not too bold, not too fine, just kind of somewhere right down the middle of the road as far as the uh, contrast between the 1084 and the 15 and 20. Just kind of a medium uh, contrast and it's going to be a uh, kitchen cutlery is what this is for. I got my billet all W'd up, I got my layer count up. I'm getting ready to stack before I split for the feather. I clean all the burrs off, get it nearly surgically clean. Mark everything, keep track. You gotta keep track of where all your parts are at and how they orient with each other. Right now we're going to split this thing right down through the center. I've got a mark on the top I put off camera just to make sure I get started correctly. I cut it with a chop saw, just a little nick in it, make sure I go straight. And this went really good. This billet is one of my quickest billets and it went straight down through the center. After I split that feather, I'm going to take each piece and just gently, gently 
flatten it out. I'm just gonna nudge it is all I'm doing for consistency and thickness and flatness where they weld back up together. You see, I got some stops in there to make sure that I don't overpress it. They line up pretty good. They're, they're married up really nice. Those pieces look ugly. Uh, everybody's does that I'm aware of. It just, they look really bad at this point, but you just wait and see. It's gonna come out of it and it's gonna fly. The gaps on the sides, because sometimes you don't get them pressed exactly flat, are, are fine. Uh, when you do an oxygen-free environment, uh, they're going to marry up in there and they're going to weld together just fine. Just a, an overview, once we do a billet, we make a Damascus billet, all we're doing with the feather is just, we're cutting it in half and it smears when you cut it and then you weld it back together. And that's what we're looking at right here. Now I'm getting ready to see what size piece I wanna take off of this billet because there's enough billet here for several uh, knives. And I, I got my mark on there and I think I can get such and such a size knife out of this piece, which is gonna be kitchen cutlery, probably a two inch heel, an eight and a half to nine inch blade. Yeah, we got it cleaned up. We're gonna just take a quick look and make sure everything's heading in the right direction. The Damascus pattern came out very symmetrical. All right, here's how I start my Ricasso area when I run this through the press. I've got the press sitting there, so I use it. A lot of guys do these by hand, and that's awesome, but I've got this, so I, I use it. And I start pressing the tang once I get my Ricasso in. taking some of the mill scale off and we're going to work on getting the knife flat i love the surface grinder there's all kinds of ways of doing this i've got this in the shop i love it i use it the surface grinder is kind of a fixer it just seems to fix stuff throw her in the oven at 1525 and quench it in some Parks 50. That temperature has to drop down quickly. I pulled these out too early before and got an auto hormone. It was in a feather, a mosaic feather, a couple years ago. I didn't see it till I got way into the knife. I learned my lesson, so I let it sit in there. And if I have a warp in the blade, it's a lot easier to fix it later. If you take the knife out and it's got a warp in it, I'd rather leave it in the oil longer to make sure it doesn't auto hormone.
I did a preliminary uh, sharpening on this uh, in order to do the performance test. Stroping it with a piece of cowhide on glued to a two by four works really good. This is just a scrap piece of wood we had laying around the shop. It was shaving sharp before I chopped. Then when I do the chop test, uh, I make sure there's no deformities, no chips, and then it has to shave afterwards, and it does. Now we're doing the finish blade profile, finishing up the, the blade edge grind all the way up to the uh, spine. After belt grinding the blade uh, from the blade edge to the spine flat, I bring it up to about a 320 grit and then I take it over to my hand sanding station and start with 220 and get all the imperfections out of it and bring it up to a 320 grit. Uh, and then I start finishing out the knife as far as putting the handle on and all the all the components and all the accessories etching my maker's mark in there. I radiused uh, the spine already over on the belt grinder and I used a 3M wheel on the buffer, a 3M scotch right wheel. Got the spine really smooth, a really nice radius across the spine. Very soft for kitchen cutlery because you can uh, put your hand up there and it's very, very comfortable. And I do the same thing around the choil area. It's all radius, super smooth. So when your finger goes up into that little finger a slot, it's, it's comfortable. There's nothing pokey or sharp up there. All right, put the file guide on there and we're gonna use it as a template to grind in our ricasso. I grind those down, depends on the blade, between 80 and 100 thousandths on the ricasso. All right, now we're going to use this custom copper alloy, specially blended for these bolsters and knife fittings. This is range brass and uh, pure copper. It's been blended about a six to one ratio with the copper on the heavy side. But to get a specific color, I was looking for something like a bronze because silicon bronze is not the easiest thing to get a hold of. And I thought it'd be a great story to use this range brass. In, uh, this kitchen cutlery. This is some of this. Uh, some of these knives I'm building right now are for Xcal. All right, now we're fitting the bolster onto the knife. I mill my holes in first, then I start filing it down, and then when I get it really close, I'll set it in the vise and uh, gently tap on it. And I keep going back over to the workbench and filing on it, tap on it, file on it. to fit my handle on do a hole in the tang I like these to fit kind of snug and I put lineup pins uh, between all my pieces also the all the knife components it just keeps everything nice and tight and in the same place every time so you can work on the handle off the knife and when you go to fit it back on the alignment pins uh, keep all the components the same nothing gets moved around odd or slips out of shape.
All right, we got the blade still at 320 grit, which is not quite halfway where we want it to be. Now the handle is probably about 320 as well. So well, there's quite a bit more work to do. So we're gonna leave the handle there and we're gonna leave the knife there for now. We're gonna start etching our maker's mark and the exclusive Excal etch on the opposite side of my maker's mark. pattern came out beautiful uh, now we're going to put it in some instant coffee and let that etch that dark stuff in there that uh, 15 and 20 will not etch but the 1084 will take the etch a little deeper you can see the color of this custom copper alloy is not brass it's not copper but it's got this really uh, beautiful deep bronzy hue to it which is what I was going for You want a clean spot to put your knife at this point and your handle and your bolster and all your components because you're finished some of these components are finished and you don't want them touching anything except for something soft so we use a lot of paper towels I'm getting ready to glue this up it's looking really good we will use West System G flex after I get done putting this in the fixture I'll chase the epoxy around a little bit for a couple hours I do a lot of cleanup initially then I'll let it sit for maybe an hour or so and come back and see what else oozed out okay we're back the next day the handle looks great there's no residue epoxy uh, oozed out and I'm getting ready to drill the holes all the way through the tang if you saw earlier I had a piece of brass that I inserted into the tang before I glued the handle on that brass is right where the holes go for the pin because it makes it really easy to drill through that brass These are going to be domed pins, kind of an upgrade. And you can make them too big, you can make them too small. It's kind of hard to get them just right. I'm still working through that. But this, these came out really good. I'm getting a, a system down, uh, some shims, pre-made shims and spacers to get my height correct. And use, doing the same process over and over. They're coming out really consistent. Get it all buffed and cleaned up. It just gently, gently sticks up just as in the beginning is one of my favorite parts of building a knife. Uh, I like the middle and another one of my favorite parts of the building a knife is the end where you get to sharpen the knife. So I'm gonna drag this little rascal in there and give it a little preliminary grind on the uh, Kyle's engraving system, <laughs> grinding diamond stones to get me started, get my rough bevel in. You see the GRS graving system there at the bottom of the screen. got a king whetstone I do the rough side first excited about how this Damascus pattern came out and the client wanted an Asian style handle on the Western profile blade it came out really nice the copper alloy and the, the bronze pin it's gonna be fun to use in the kitchen for somebody they're gonna they're gonna love entertaining with this knife they're gonna look awesome when they're in there cutting veggies or uh, carving up a tomahawk steak they're gonna have fun entertaining with this thanks for watching may the forge be with you bye bye hi my name is Josh Royer and I'm a producer of the Learn Knife Making online course. And yes, 
we have knife making courses. In fact, we've been doing them for years and that's exactly why I'm here talking with you. You see, they're really good and I think you should watch them. If you like what we do on YouTube, then you're going to love what we're doing with the courses. You'll get to learn the skills that take your knife making to the next level so you can challenge yourself and win. Plus, you can come back and watch it and you won't miss a thing. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, visit LearnKnifeMaking.com or click the link in the bio. I hope to see you there.